If you are someone that is working a traditional non-tech job and want to become a six figures developer, this video is gonna help you massively. Probably you're experiencing these things as you're learning code right now. There is too much information and you don't know exactly what to choose. And that actually makes you frustrated because you have all this time, you have all this passion, all this focus that you want to put into this craft, but you don't exactly know what should be that thing that you can double down on. Another thing that you maybe are struggling with is the actual roadmap that you should be following so you can maximize the output of the time that you're actually putting in. And another thing that you might be struggling with is motivation. Is this the right thing for you? Should you keep pursuing this thing even though you don't see the results right now? And this thing, you know, it was going through my mind every single day when I was a barista, when I was, you know, working with my hands, with my back, you know, every single day. And after working like 10, 12 hour shifts, you know, I was going home tired and I had to keep putting in the work two, three, four, five hours sometimes into this craft without having any like real guarantee that there is like a future for me in this career. And now six, seven years after that moment, after, you know, I got the result that I was looking for, I have realized, you know, I have done a few things right and I have done a few things wrong. If I explain to you what I've done wrong, you could avoid those things like the plague, ideally, and then you double down on what works and you'll also do the opposite of those wrong things that I was doing. And if you, you know, in logic, in theory, if you do the opposite of the bad stuff, you'll be doing the right stuff and that will pretty much guarantee that you'll get that first developer job and you'll also get it faster because if you waste time doing the wrong things, obviously you are just procrastinating and then you are not doing anything. My name is Christian and I was a barista and now I help people become programmers and if you are interested in learning how that works, how I help people, you can check the first link in the description. But the first thing I want to tell you is that you just have to get started. If you are still thinking about learning programming, just get started. There is a reason why you clicked on this video. There is a reason why you got interested in programming. So don't hesitate. Don't think too much about it. Just get started, get going. Don't worry about the possible things that might happen in five months that you don't know about it. Don't try to know everything because that's impossible. Just get started, make your first strides get your first failures, get your first, you know, scars from the war. And that's how you'll become successful. If you try to avoid, you know, by all possible means, not getting hurt while learning code, you will not get anywhere. This is the sad reality that most people find themselves in. They are trying to avoid the pain as much as possible, just to realize that there is no growth without pain. If you feel like, okay, you start a code and you don't really feel much pain, you don't feel like you are stupid every day and you just started or you are thinking about getting started, that means you're not doing the right thing. So if you're using like apps on your phone that teach you, you know, programming, you're not really being challenged. You're actually just procrastinating. Okay, that's one thing that I see like some people do. And for me, like, how do you even think about learning code from a mobile app? That for me doesn't make any sense. So if you are doing that, stop right now. Another thing that you might be doing and is gonna kill your career is you watching tutorials. If you are at that stage in your life right now where you bought like a handful of Udemy courses, you have a subscription on Codecademy, you have a, an account on Free Code Camp and whatnot, and you don't actually create your own stuff, how can I say how bad you are without insulting you? because I'm telling you this as I'm telling it to myself because I was doing exactly this. All these people that have like hundreds and thousands of views on their videos, they make those videos for you to watch so they can monetize your attention and then so they can sell their affiliate stuff. They are making so much money off of YouTube views that you cannot even imagine, okay? And those people that are making tutorials, they are well-intentioned. They don't want anything bad to happen to you, but they are just regurgitating the same stuff over and over and over again. And then you are paying with your attention. And then you are also not learning anything. You are silently procrastinating every single day. You're not learning anything. You are just shutting off your brain and you are just watching a Netflix show. Like I was watching Vikings, you know, the other day, and it seems like interesting, right? You are learning about history and whatnot. 
But in reality, you are just shutting off your brain and then you just watch someone live through a role. And that's what you're doing whenever you are watching a, a tutorial, okay? On building, you know, like the next Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Your job as a programmer is to solve problems, not to watch someone else solve the problems. Because if you watch someone else solve the problems, you are essentially disregarding the most important part of or the most important part about being a programmer, which is solving problems. In my opinion, the most important thing for you right now is to start to understand the patterns and start to see how the theory that you are learning from Free Code Camp, Udemy, from wherever you are learning from, and try to see like how that theory applies to practice. For example, the other day I was speaking with uh, with a student that just joined my program, and he was like, oh, "Dude, I'm I'm learning from Free Code Camp, you know, but." They talk about arrays and stuff like that, and I have no idea where they are really applied in the real world. And I said, yeah, of course they don't teach you that. They just show you like theory. But for example, an array, it's the list of comments that are underneath this video. Simple. I told him that and he was like, mind blown. And for me, it's crazy that none of these guys, you know, that are making tutorials, they're not showing how the theory applies to the practice. For example, why would you need an object? Well. For example, this video that you're watching is an object. It has a URL for the video, it has a user that posted the video, it has a timestamp, it has a description. All those things are properties inside an object and then a front-end developer recreated with, with like HTML, CSS and JavaScript whatever that object was holding, you know, in, in, in memory, right? Or in, in, yeah, I guess in memory. Try to make the connections between the theory and practice as fast as you can. That was the thing that was like holding me back for so, so long. Because, you know, like everyone can regurgitate the same theory. You can read books, you can read, you know, like medium blog posts, you can read tweets, you can read, you know, some cool thing on LinkedIn. You can watch videos on YouTube, but if you do not make the connection between theory and practice, you will be stuck forever. The next thing that you need to understand, in my opinion, you know, after six, seven years of like being a developer and whatnot, is that the faster you get to work like a developer, the faster you will become a developer. And I, I guess it makes sense, right? If you do the actions and the things that a developer would do, it's almost impossible not to become the developer. Obviously, you need to put yourself out there, you need to apply to jobs, you need, you need to go through interviews, you need to fail a few interviews, and at some point you'll get an offer. So if you have the skills, and if you know how to use your skills like a developer, you will eventually become a developer. It's just a matter of time. The next thing that I want to talk about is that time is not important. So many people are asking me like, hey, how fast can I become a developer? And my answer is always, I have no idea, bro. Like, I, I cannot tell you that because time passes by regardless if you do the right thing or if you don't do the right thing. Time is literally the only variable that you cannot control. And if you have like this goal that by 1st of June, 2023 I'll be a developer and if you mess it up you'll be massively disappointed instead what you should be doing again in my opinion is to think about what is an actual developer doing and focus on the habits and the skills that that developer would have and then you will become a developer at some point the time is irrelevant the time doesn't matter Remove that from your equation. The next thing is that you should start comparing yourself with other people. Why is that? Because other people, aka recruiters, hiring managers, developers that are, you know, interviewers, are going to compare your profile, you know, that little piece of paper or PDF that describes who you are and what you can do. They'll compare that with tens, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of people. So, if you do not compare yourself with others, other people will. And then you'll be at a massive disadvantage. If you think that people would hire you just to give you like a favor or something like that, you are massively mistaken. They will never do that. All these companies, all these businesses, they only care about one thing and one thing only. And we can see it now with all these layoffs. They care about money. Yeah, they care about, you know, like you being excited about being a programmer and all this stuff. You know, they, they say that on the front end, you know, because it looks good. It's work. It's nice to say that. 
but in reality they only care about their millions and billions and trillions of dollars and if you are not the type of individual that will make them more money than they are actually paying you then you will not be hired because you can be absolutely hating being a programmer you can you can absolutely hate it but if you are so good they will pay you no no matter how much you hate it right they will rather have some guy that or girl that hates their job but is like really the best freaking programmer in the world rather than having you jimmy super excited about programming that doesn't know anything you know about how to actually make them more money these are these are some of the things you know that i have realized and if you if you manage to mold yourself into that ideal persona that these companies are looking for you'll be massively massively rewarded in the marketplace the marketplace wants something and the person who manages to create themselves in the best possible way for the marketplace, that person is gonna win. So how do you go about becoming this desirable developer? The first thing, as mentioned, is like figure out what a developer does and become that. The next thing that you should be doing, in my opinion, is to look at all these job descriptions and see like what kind of hard skills you need to learn, like in, in terms of like technologies and whatnot and then soft skills. What kind of person you need to be besides, you know, like learning, like being able to write code. Team player. So how do you become a team player if you've never been working in a team? If you do Udemy courses and YouTube tutorials, like how do you play in a team? If you don't know how to use Git or Jira and stuff like that. Well, it's gonna be very difficult. And I saw this like firsthand with my students, I was working with them, you know, like one-on-one, -on -one. We, I helped them build their projects. And then when I put them in a team to build this like SaaS project, it was very difficult for them to realize like how to work, how to communicate with each other. So these team skills are skills that you can actually learn, but you cannot learn them in a vacuum. You cannot learn them from watching a YouTube video. You can watch a tutorial on how safe agile actually works, but the real way to learn how safe agile works is by going through how safe agile actually works in the real world you know like you know how theory is very different than practice and the more practice you have working on real projects in a real team solving like real problems and dealing with the real bullshit that the real developer would deal with that's how you become really good at de developing software that's how you become really valuable in the marketplace these are the things that you should be focusing on if you really like want to make a career change if it's like a toy for you then do whatever you want you know but if you really want to become a software developer this year and next year you need to be very strategic and very intentional with your time and with your focus you, you'll just get frustrated because i remember like five six seven years ago when i got into the industry it was very difficult because nobody wanted to hire, you know, self-taught developers, right? It wasn't really a thing back then. It was more like a taboo. So I had to deal with that bullshit. But then the technologies that I had to learn were like not so difficult. They weren't as mature as now. But nowadays, getting hired as a software developer without a degree and whatnot is more acceptable. It's extremely acceptable, I would say. I haven't seen anyone complaining about it but the barrier of entry is higher so everyone can start learning code from udemy and code academy and free code camp and all this bullshit. but becoming good enough to for getting hired is quite difficult in my opinion because you don't it's not only about you giving your best it's about you doing what's required that's that's kind of a mindset shift that you need to have and this year it's gonna be the easiest time from now on to get hired in 2024 is gonna be harder 2025 even harder and six even harder seven even harder it's just getting harder exponentially like there is no way to like hide ourselves around this stuff it's so obvious and if you don't get it you won't get it you know what i mean so that's kind of it if you need help with all this stuff that we talked about and if you want to get the most out of your time and the most out of your buck apply for a free consultation call. I'm gonna work with you until you get hired, no matter how long it takes, six months, nine months, 12 months, one year, two years, no matter how long it takes, I'm gonna work with you. And then I also have a guarantee. So if you 
literally do every single thing that I'm telling you and you don't improve a little bit, I'm gonna give you all your money back because I failed you as a coach and I don't wanna fail you. And that's like me removing all the risks and all the fears from yourself. If you come in and do the work, I can guarantee in two days you'll see massive improvements, no questions asked. But if you don't, hey, you can get all your money back and you can also, you know what, we can do a video together on YouTube and you can say everything that's bad about me. And I'm gonna be very grateful for that because I can change it so the next person won't experience the same thing as you. But that never happened and it will never happen. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, like it. If you wanna say something about this stuff, comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.